Alrighty everybody, today we've got uh, modern traditionals and what makes them modern. So let's talk about that and show off a, a small portion of my knife collection inventory that uh, represents that. So, when you first talk, talk, think about and talk about traditional pocket knives, what typically you think about lock mechanisms of being either slip joint, which is no locking mechanism, uh, and or your back locks are very common. And then if you go going into the multi-tool world, you think of the Victorinox uh, Swiss Army knives. Uh, also, no locking mechanisms and just being a very versatile little pocketable multi-tool in, in a very very traditional sense. So, how has the knife world and the industry, pocket knife industry, modernized all of these traditional case slip joints and uh, something with a back lock like the Buck 110 which I only have a the modernized uh, Buck 110 Slim is all I currently own um, to sacks that have that are modernized modified in uh, blade coat with a dark blade coating and, and different scales uh, colors uh, and, and often you'll see different uh, prints <clears throat> I've got a handful of those as well as the a locks lineup where they've removed the plastic and gone with a colored aluminum scale still with brass pins with uh, pinned uh, scales um, but just gone with different material and offered colors up to those of us who don't want to live in that black and white world anymore <laughs> so uh, those are great examples of how Victorinox has modernized their uh, uh, Swiss Army knives um, and we'll go ahead and hit on that with another company that has taken the Swiss Army knife style and done their own versions of upgrades uh, first by uh, material on the on the scales of jumping into micarta and then also removing your uh, taking out your uh, brass pins or, or um, uh, scale pins and doing screws these are T8 screws which is awesome so glad it's you know just a couple two two T8 screws on each side instead of like four or five uh, T6's everywhere on each side so that's that's fantastic that they did that this is the MKM uh, Magna or whatever whatever it's called uh, and and then another thing that they did was they did a um, stonewashed, uh, tumbled stonewash uh, finish on all the metal, the blade as well as all the other tools have that uh, stonewash finish on it, which is awesome, which is cool, which is a very neat, modernized uh, uptake, upgrade to uh, your sack style knife. Uh, the uh, all the liners in here are still your standard uh, plain Jane aluminum or steel it's probably steel um, framework in there between all the tools but what they also did which is a bit that I love along with the micarta and the steel being M390 is they throw this fork in here and this is awesome I love this little cocktail style fork this is so neat I, I love 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 the idea of taking this and using this to, to you know eat hors d'oeuvres or, <laughs> or you know use it to flip my steak on the grill or something when I was a dummy and forgot my utensils in the house uh, who knows who knows what you can use that fork for it's just cool to have that little fork alright so love this this is this is really cool modernized in several ways uh, all positive ways of modernizing your standard uh, Victorinox Swiss Army knife Alright, going back to slip joints, from your case, 
knives and Case still makes knives and boy they've jumped the gun jumped in to modernizations themselves not just with materials and some designs but they've gotten into some backlocks and, and some uh, and some uh, higher end steels and stuff on some different some very modern knives really getting away and not ending but continuing to mold their company to what the today's demand is in knives and and their competition um, by making some other knives that are not all your traditional slip joint multi-bladed folders like this old guy so that is really cool I don't own any of, of their upgraded stuff but if eh, in hindsight, Case still has a relatively respectedly high, a higher price tag on a lot of their things, and I mean, it, they're part mostly leaning on their name for that. I I believe that's my my uh, take on that, but um, because I would say with their increased in volume of of output and number of knives and stuff, their uh, fit and finish quality control has. Um, taken a small step down uh, just because of that just because of the demands of the industry and, and their company uh, as a whole so I mean it happens it's going to happen sorry uh, if you don't want it to happen you're gonna have to get uh, more customized or limited runs and stuff like that where the volumes of, of each model is not insanely high uh, and they are going back to paying that much more attention to detail you know, on the fit and finish. So, if you don't want to pay the case price tag, Smoky Mountain Knife Works currently owns them and, and runs the show on them, but the Rough Rider uh, knife line is a fantastic way to get this, something like this at least, in either sticking primarily traditional as far as design and, and materials goes or you can do a little bit of upgrading with some some different uh, changing out some different materials um, and, and a few new uh, styles blade shapes and combinations and whatnot that are a little bit more uh, modernized but Rough Rider does a pretty stand-up job especially for the low price point and making some really neat really cool interesting fun traditional style um, knives with some slight upgrades and modernizations to some of the patterns that they have so check them out at Smoky Knife Mountain Knife Works that's the place to go for the Rough Riders you can find them in a couple other places but it's just best to get go to Smoky Mountain knife works you can see all of them that they've got all right uh, let's go continue with some slip joints uh, let me do the bench made proper this one is probably if anything in a lot of ways the least modernized in the fact that um, they they went to its its pin type um, screws they're still screws because the because the um, t6s are over here but on this side there's not t6s it's it's that setup um, so it looks more traditional on the show side with the benchmade logo than it does seeing the screws on the other side um, but a typical very iconic great uh, traditional style um, shape and, and and the overall look uh, even though it's modern more modernized uh, scale material of this micarta and because it's a brown micarta and because I carry this thing um, often um, it's definitely got all my skin oils into it and so it's very worn looking very uh, traditionally old schooled um, mountain man whatever you want to refer to it as so you know half stop all that good great great knife um, so other than the micarta and the blade material being s30v those are really the upgrades and and then the screws here but it's doesn't have pocket clip doesn't have any other jazz to it it's a very standardized uh, slip joint very well done by Benchmade 
slight modernization to it, not a whole lot. Uh, another good, somewhat good slip joint uh, that shows modernization is this guy. This is the Kaiser uh, Zip Slip, and it's got your uh, half stop and, and locking points. I love the acoustics on this. Three different sounds, three different pitches. That's really cool. That's fun. You, I can sit there and just listen to that all day. <laughs> just kidding. Um, G10 material. They did throw a pocket clip on there. Uh, they've got a cutout for for instead of a nail nick, so that's a more of a modernized uh, deal. And then a, a blade finish that then continues with the main spine in in the handle as well. Um, kind of cool in that two tone effect with the liners being. Uh, satin or uh, polished and and then that being a uh, a washed finish on that so and then they went and they've got some fancy looking um, pivot uh, pin heads pivot heads there so that's cool this is a very modern modernized traditional slip joint uh, it's a lot of people have commented that it's weird how their half stop is not halfway like this you know, not a 90 degree or almost 90 degree. It's a lot less than that, which is a weird position for that half stop to be in. Um, not so much favored by those who are all about slip joints with ha with proper half stops. So I, I don't mind it as much because I, I understand that it's a modernized slip joint. And uh, the proportions of the handle to the, to the blade... Are, are different and that's what I'm assuming is causing it to have that out of place half stop uh, as some people are deeming it to be um, so it, it is what it is it's still an excellent knife it's beautiful love the materials um, and, and, and I love, really really like the acoustics the acoustics are fun alright next we have um, a Civivi Yes, and it's a back lock, and it is a uh, very traditional back lock, uh, being in in the towards the back end, but it's super modernized. Doesn't have pocket clip, but it's super not modernized in in blade materials and handle materials. That's some micarta with some carbon fiber. Yeah, carbon fiber, totally modern. Um, and then, and arguably, some would say that Damascus is not necessarily so much a a modern thing because uh, they did Damascus decades and decades and decades ago uh, but the way that they are doing Damascus blades with all the different uh, Damascus type patterns and cuts and, and the way it ends up the, the end result I would say is a lot more modern than what tr traditional Damascus uh, blades looked like a hundred years ago um, but it is very modern in, in the shape, you know, overall profile of it. Uh, the fuller right here and, and the nice clip point uh, blade and it being a, a true back lock. Uh, very, very, uh, and no pocket clip, very traditional in, in all that regards. So that's a cool, cool little budget, um, fancier looking uh, traditional lock back with all those upgraded fit and finish modernized uh, takes. All right, next uh, we have something we're going even fancier back to slip joints. This is an MKM, an Italian uh, design and, and company. Uh, a very, very thin profiled blade. This guy is awesome in the sense that everything about it is modernized I mean is this the joint which is a mod which is a traditional uh, non-locking knife mechanisms for a knife um, but the materials and everything else about it is totally screams modern all all these lines all these edges the every, every uh, aspect of its design uh, the crown spine and, and following into the back uh, of of the handle here is all very Italian and and a, and a modern um, fancy take on everything. Uh, what's cool about it 
is is it says made by Makita inside there between the liners on the spine of of the handle. So that is cool. It's a Burnley design. It's a beautiful knife. This is a gorgeous knife. Gorgeous materials. Beautiful presentation. But it does still yet being a slip joint having a traditional feel to it. So that's why it's in in there that way for those reasons. Um, here is a back lock that is only traditional in the fact that it's a back lock uh, and it has wood scales. Wood is was you know so long ago kind of the material that was put on pocket knives. Um, so it's traditional in that sense. Uh, it's traditional that it's a back lock, but they moved it forward, so it is a mid back lock or a mid lock back knife. However you want to term uh, terminize it, terminize whatever term you want to use for that lock. Um, so this is a Spyderco chopper roll with uh, uh, your burlap maple scales. It's everything Spyderco is modernized with the blade shape, the spidey hole, uh, the wire uh, deep carry clip. All of that is just very modernized, very Spyderco, but has just a tiny little bit of traditional vibe influence in it. So that's that one. Love that knife. Great little knife. Uh, what have I not covered? I've covered everything except for this guy, and he is a little bit of a stretch, kind of like the Spider Co. And, and as far as being a uh, a modern traditional, but you know, it's it's the profile that's traditional. Uh, being having a bolster, um, uh, just the sh uh, the shape of the handle more so, and being a bolster, having a bolster uh, is is the uh, is more of the traditional look, I guess. Uh, initial appearance. <laughs> I don't know. This this is a far stretch for trying to call this uh, Pena X Series Raptor a modern traditional. I just kind of wanted to show it off again because I love this knife. Um, and, and it is a very gentle, gentleman-esque uh, styled uh, modern knife that I feel at least kind of gives a slight traditional vibe to it. I mean, it's, it's something that both me and my grandfather would pull out of our pockets at, at a fancy uh, restaurant dinner table to um, <laughs> cut our steaks because the steak knives suck <laughs> uh, at the restaurant. So that is, <laughs> that is my perspective. Uh, take it for what it is. Argue away in the comments. Give me your feedback. Tell me what your favorite modern traditional knife is, and I will check you guys out later. Uh, hopefully in a video that is not knives, because lately I've just kind of been on a knife kick, and I'm not sure if you guys are going to enjoy that, or if you want me to go back more towards camping gear and and the other stuff that I throw in to my channel. So, but, yep. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.